The future is absolutely in decentralized finance and Ethereum and the rest of the cryptocurrency space. And quite frankly, we need it as a tool, the greatest tool for freedom that has ever existed on the planet and we need it. And right now this last week has showed us exactly why we need it. The most important thing is that it, you can't kill it. It's always going to be there. So let's move past Bitcoin now. Okay, so while there's value in having a currency that someone can't just print a bunch of it to fund a war or print a bunch of it to bail out Wall Street, um, and then everyone else's savings get devalued by inflation, you know, it's literally theft, re reverse Robin Hood, taking from the poor to the rich. Anyone with savings is getting destroyed and not even savings. Anyone who has, you know, relatively static wage, they get destroyed because wages don't keep up with the inflation that they create. Now, modern uh, monetary theory states that we have to have a certain amount of inflation in order to keep the economy going because that inflation incurs spending and consumerism. But there, we've seen what the price is on that. Um, we can't have constant continual growth on a finite planet. This is the root cause of everything that's happening in the world right now. So modern monetary theory can go screw itself because it's taking humankind and the planet down with it, all so that we can keep this economy and rampant consumerism going. No matter what, it all comes down to how much energy we have available to do work and we have grown the economy and had a tremendous explosion of value and innovation out of the back of oil reserves that are in the ground. It's non-renewable resource and we're running out of it. It's pretty clear that we're already past Hubbard's curve peak and we're on the way down. We need a restriction, a, con a contraction of our global energy expenditure and we should be using that energy or green energy infrastructure so that our baseline when we come off of this oil high is as high as possible to maintain as good of a quality of life as possible. So um, modern monetary theory is driving us off of a cliff. And this is one of the reasons why I think something like Bitcoin could actually be one of the things that saves the human race, because we have to stop that. We have to decouple ourselves from the mismatch between reality of a finite planet and the make-believe 2% growth economy that modern monetary theory is doing to our planet. Whether it's Bitcoin or a purely green currency like Nano or something like Ethereum that is can act as a currency, it's also programmable um, and it's moving towards proof of stake now, which is less energy than proof of work. We need something. So now we've talked about Bitcoin, we've talked about um, fiat currencies, the problem with it, printing, inflation, power, corruption, all that stuff. Um, power and control is big. You know, um, they can control what you can take to other countries. They can control what you spend it on. They can lock your bank account. Bitcoin requires no permission to access its level of service. It takes the power from those people. And if I want to give you one value of Bitcoin, whatever that is, nobody should be able to say that we cannot do that transaction. That's what Bitcoin is. It's freedom incarnate on a train that is ramping up in speed and cannot be stopped. It won't be stopped. It will be here forever. It's the greatest tool for freedom that we've ever had access to in the human history of the human race. The world has been shown in the last couple days and weeks just why we need cryptocurrency. Now, cryptocurrency is not about Bitcoin. And as soon as anyone brings this up, we start talking about the propaganda that we've been programmed in our head that Bitcoin is a Ponzi. You can't use Bitcoin to buy a coffee. You know, all this, it, so much um, energy usage and all this stuff that's kind of half truths and also complete um, garbage. Bitcoin is not cryptocurrency. It is a cryptocurrency. It is the first iteration of blockchain technology. It was used as money. Now it has its own limitations that everyone knows, 
But what I really want to get into the fact now is moving past that towards Ethereum. Okay, so Ethereum is like if you took Bitcoin and you added programmability to it. So now we have programmable money. Ethereum is like a global decentralized brain. It's like a global decentralized supercomputer that applications run off of and they can because they're decentralized and because there's value in the decentralization and tokenization of that, you can use it as currency. Now, the important thing about Ethereum is that now you can program your currency. You can run applications on top of your currency. So this opens it up to stuff like decentralized finance. It opens it up to lending, smart contracts, the way real estate would be done. Um, it will impact every single way that the world does business. Now, why is this important? Okay, this is super important because one of the applications that you could use Ethereum for, and it's being done right now, um, developed, is you could run a decentralized financial exchange. And what that means is, picture Robinhood. Robinhood runs an exchange and they have a server. Anytime Robinhood or the people who control it, like Citadel Financial, like Morgan Capital, um, decide that, hey, we're losing money, they can just go in and change the rules. Now, that is a centralized server being controlled by a single party. And you have to trust that that party is going to act in your best interest. And pretty clearly, we've seen that that's not the case. Okay, so now we're going to have a decentralized or a centralized server and we'll just, you know, it'll be me who runs it. You guys have to now trust me. These other big guys can come in and they can hack my server. They can get in and take control of it. That's not good either. Now let's take it to the next level. We're going to actually have 10 of us act as a committee and we're going to all run this server together and we're going to validate each other. So all 10 people have to agree on every transaction. That way, if one gets hacked and controlled, then the other nine will reject it and continue on with business as usual. In order to hack this and stop it, in order to stop that, you would need to take control of six out of the 10 computers, more than like 50, more than 50, so 51% attack. Now, because there's only 10 of us, that's relatively doable. So decentralization across 10 servers, it's not great. Okay, so now what cryptocurrency is in Ethereum is complete decentralization to an extreme. Now we're gonna take, instead of 10 servers, we're gonna have millions of servers running simultaneously. And every single time they check, every single transaction, they're gonna to come to consensus and agree with each other on whether that is a valid, legitimate, legal transaction based on the code that was executed for this smart contract. And the smart contract in this state, in this case, is just a decentralized exchange. So now we have this system where um, nobody can shut it down because it's not being controlled by anybody. It's being controlled by everybody that is owning and running the server. In order to attack the server and shut it down, you would need to attack 51% of the servers that are out there. And it gets to the point where the energy required to do that literally just does not exist on the planet because that's where the crypto part comes in. These servers are running um, cryptographically encrypted. So in order to break the encryption, you need to run computing power. Computing power needs electricity. In order to make the attack, you literally do not have enough electricity on the planet to compromise that server. So what this means is now you have a decentralized, um, a decentralized exchange where nobody is allowed to shut it down. Nobody is allowed to change the rules. Everyone has agreed to the rules by joining the server and the rules just execute. It's just a computer code that runs and everybody has access to the service of being able to buy GameStop shares and nobody can stop or interrupt that service. It will run and it cannot be hacked. You do not need anyone's permission to access it. You don't have to have any kind of central running authority. And if you left your country and you wanted to do a trade in um, Italy, then um, you could do that. And then if you want to travel back, to your United States or Canada or wherever you're from, that transaction, because it's not actually crossing any physical borders, it's just out there in the interweb, um, on, the, in, on the internet, um, and often not even stored on the internet, um, it just follows you wherever it goes. You don't have to ask your, um, your country if you can bring your shares back into your country. 
You don't have to ask your bank if you can trade those shares for any kind of money. You don't have to ask anybody for anything. They no longer have the power um, because there is no central authority. There's actually nobody with the power because a value transaction between me and you should not have to be okayed by a bank, by a government, by anybody. If I want to give you value and you want to accept the value and we want to exchange that value, nobody should be allowed to step in and say no. Nobody should be allowed to step in and say, fine, you can do that. Give me 1% of the transaction. So that is why we need cryptocurrency. If the um, global exchanges were currently run on a decentralized exchange, then nobody like crypto, uh, like Robinhood could go in and limit your buys of a share to one share, which they've done. Nobody could go in and stop the buying completely, but only allow the selling so that their buddies can exit their position, which they did because they've made a business decision that it's better for them to do something illegal than to actually lose at the game that they're trying to rig. So fully understand that the world has totally seen today why we need cryptocurrency. And if anyone is telling you that it's a bubble, a scam, a Ponzi, there's a reason why this has existed for as long as it has. There's a reason why a system as disruptive as this is to the powers that are in control of the world has not been shut down. It's because they literally cannot stop it. Pandora is out of the box. There's no way to put it back in the box. This is here. It's the greatest tool for freedom that has ever existed. So don't let the media or anybody else convince you that it's a bubble, a Ponzi or whatever. Bitcoin price might go up and down. Who gives a crap? It's not about Bitcoin. It's about taking power back from the people who are manipulating the world to their own advantage to keep themselves on top and bleed everybody else dry. We've seen enough in the last hundred years about where this wealth discrepancy gap is going. We've got a pretty good idea that the trajectory is just on a larger and larger gap the longer that we allow this to happen. I'm a very much a free market minded person, but I fully understand that when you allow, when you create a set of rules, it's human nature to manipulate those rules and play in the gray areas to maximize whatever you're trying to maximize. Typically that's money. So when you create a system of rules, humans will always break them to the extent that they can in order to manipulate the system for them. And that's where cryptocurrency comes in. It takes that power back. It puts those rule sets out front and nobody can use their wealth and leverage and power in the world to basically break and rewrite the rules anytime they see fit and fully understand that cryptocurrency is the future. It's coming. You cannot stop it. Nobody can stop it. And the people who understand this the last are going to be the last people on board. Bitcoin price might crash. Doesn't matter. It will always exist. It will always rebound and there will only always be 21 million of them. Whether or not we move to other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum, like Nano, like anything else that you want, um, I mentioned Nano because it is literally Bitcoin that is free in energy, um, zero energy to transact. It's everything Bitcoin wanted to do without the energy and green, uh, you know, environmentally destructive nature of it. It has its other shortfalls, um, mostly that it hasn't been um, trial tested through battle yet. So we don't know exactly how secure it actually is. It uses a dis different um, consensus algorithm and I don't want to get too much into that, but there are projects out there that are not Bitcoin um, that are doing everything Bitcoin wanted to do, um, but improving on it. Bitcoin's got first mover advantage. I still think it's a good buy because when people hear about cryptocurrency, they don't come in and buy Nano. They don't buy um, Cardano. They typically don't even buy Ethereum yet. They come in and they buy Bitcoin. And that is why it's good to buy Bitcoin right now because new people will buy Bitcoin. The future is absolutely in decentralized finance and Ethereum and the rest of the cryptocurrency space. And quite frankly, we need it as a tool, the greatest tool for freedom that has ever existed on the planet and we need it. And right now this last week has showed us exactly why we need it. It gives everyone access to the same service. You don't have to ask anybody, please, can I buy some shares of blah, blah, blah. 
you're just you just go do it because nobody should be allowed to interfere with me trading value with you.